So thank you, Professor Anton, for making a video response. Uh, I guess I want to start this video off by saying that in my first video, I didn't really explore my own opinions about this technology all that much in, in an attempt to pose questions. But going off a couple things that you said, you said that uh, information is a function of goal seeking and all the information in the world isn't going to give you values and direction. And um, you also said that these things might in a way be um, fashion accessories of consumer capitalism. And I, I really liked Amusing Ourselves to Death. I found it both interesting, informative, and persuasive. Well, I guess both isn't the right word since I used three, <laughs> three words. But um, recently I was watching the, the Futurama, re-watching the Futurama episode, uh, Attack of the Killer App, and I would recommend that episode to anyone who hasn't seen it or might need to refresh their memory because I think that uh, really does an excellent job of lampooning a lot of the recent um, developments in technology and in, in viral internet culture and smartphones and uh, YouTube and pretty much all of it. Just, it just lampoons the whole internet culture uh, very, very well in my opinion and uh, amusing ourselves to death. Also, I recommend to the audience as, as a read. Um, but for me, I guess skepticism isn't the right word that I would apply to, you know, smartphones. Uh, it's more like cynicism. Uh, it would probably be a more apt word because um, I guess starting out with computers, uh, I didn't have, um, you know, any real knowledge or, or choice. There were family computers, but... Once I got my own computer, the, the first thing that really sparked me to uh, understand computers at the level of hardware and um, learn how to modify and build computers was working with digital recording uh, because at the time I didn't really have, you know, the extra money to buy some four-track recorder, you know, some sort of Fostex four-track and... Uh, I said, hey, I can record through my computer, and then I discovered that uh, the computers at the time weren't quite powerful enough to process a lot of the different things that I was doing in multiple tracks and, and effects. And so I looked into getting an audio card, and you know, through that experience, I started to understand um, computer hardware and um, the power of the computer versus what you're trying to do. And, and video editing, I guess, uh, exaggerated that even more so than um, working with music, because with music, it, it the, the files are a lot smaller often compared to video, and it's, it's less uh, intensive on the computer. But you can also do a lot, you know, there's, there's lots of ways to increase the computer demand uh, depending on the task. But when I look at a smartphone, looking over the free apps, there's lots of different um, music-related apps. Some of them are, are worthwhile in the sense that they have some sort of didactic value or um, are helpful in, in um, music production, like a metronome, you know, for practice and something to teach you chords, something to quiz you on um, musical notes and that sort of thing. But then there's other things like a four-track recorder on the phone and other things geared towards actually making music through the phone. And that's, that's where I begin to start to laugh, I guess, because, you know, having, a, you know, a powerful desktop computer and having, you know, dedicated hardware like an audio interface and um, a MIDI keyboard for producing music on a computer. Um, I really look at these phones as, as toys and that their, their hardware is, you know, there's about a 10 year lag hardware wise between desktop computers and these smartphones. And, uh, because they don't have conventional keyboards and mouse and, uh, hard drives and, and, and that sort of thing, it's, it's virtually, it's not impossible to produce music on here, but, um, all of the features that these phones have seem towards uh, geared towards a relatively um, narrow class of people, and it may be a lot of people uh, given the the structure of American society, but narrow in the sense that as somebody who doesn't commute frequently, 
who only travels uh, long distances to visit family a few times a year, um, I really don't have time to be looking at a screen, you know, the uh, the actual screen feature of the phone. So beyond beyond it being just a phone that also plays music, it, the video feature it might be useful, it, you know, on that rare uh, trip that I take. Um, but I'm not taking the subway in New York every day, and I'm not um, flying, you know, traveling around a lot, um, you know, needing something to occupy my time. And I suppose if I was, I would probably prefer a laptop anyway. But my point is that these features, the, the, the free games, the free music features, the, the, or even the pay stuff, all of these apps essentially boil down to um, people who perhaps maybe only have a smartphone and it's their only um, piece of communication, or people who would actually um, sit there and frequently use it. Because for, for any sort of serious application, these phones are a toy, essentially. And um, the commuter class, I guess, you know, the public transit class, the uh, frequent flyer mile class, um, those sorts of people might have more incentive than the average person to frequently use this technology or put it to its highest possible use. And I'm sure on the job that a lot of people need these. But at the same time, the marketing hype machine and... Um, the cultural buzz that surrounds these things in America, I can only take a cynical attitude towards it because a lot of people want to act like smartphones are actually offering you something new. And as I, as I stated before, I think that the, uh, you know, on a hardware level, these smartphones lag about 10 years behind um, actual computer technology, if not more. I mean, a 1.3 single core processor really... Um, and my brother had, he has a, you know, it's not, he doesn't have an iPhone, but it's just like an iPod touch, I guess. And he was required to get it, uh, through because it, because of a, uh, a language program that he had, uh, that they had on there, um, because he was in uh, linguist school, but he was showing me that they had Grand Theft Auto three. And I remember, uh, when my brother was, you know, I don't know how old he was, you know, 12 or 11, showing me Grand Theft Auto 3 on the computer. Um, and again, it's one of those situations where computers 10 years ago, it was, you know, might be pushing them uh, to play Grand Theft Auto 3. And now, you know, smartphones have arrived at that point. And I just, in terms of the interface and the type of, of, of way that you interact with... Um, with a smartphone, I wonder why anyone would actually want to play Grand Theft Auto 3 on a smartphone and and deal with, um, you know, the touchscreen as your only means of control when you could just go play it on your computer. Again, if you're, if you're a commuter, if you're sitting on a subway, I could see why you might want to have this little, uh, you know, Game Boy um, all-in-one device in your hands, but everything that these things involve has already been done 10 years ago. It's only that they're uh, packing more and more things into a single device. But as you talked about with going over the doctoral dissertation, which it was a 400-page document, your ability to spread things out, um, the, the biggest limitation to a smartphone essentially is, its, is size. Uh, the screen is only so big. It's only so good for reading. I personally... Um, wouldn't really want to read a book on this thing, even though I, I've, you know, put things on there in an effort to test things out, see, gauge where the technology is at, how I feel about the technology, get firsthand experience and not just prejudge this sort of thing. But, you know, have, making a, um, you know, an informed decision, I say that I'm not really interested in reading books on my phone and I'm not really interested in playing video games on my phone and I'm not really interested in uh, creating music on my phone and I'm not really interested in doing any of the things that uh, these phones have to offer because I have better alternatives. I mean, 
I, I'm, a, I'm glad that this phone has a 5 megapixel camera because seven or eight years ago I paid $400 for a 500 megapixel, or a, for, excuse me, a 5 megapixel camera. But, um, you know, I have a better camera since then. I have better music recording equipment and, uh, you know, better options for doing any of the things that this phone has to offer. And the only time when I would reach for this phone to do any of those things is when it was my only other choice. Um, I guess for some people, having that all-in-one device, all in one device as a sort of security blanket, you know, I'm bored in this moment, I'm going to whip out my smartphone, I'm going to, you know, play the little electronic, you know, virtual keyboard and that sort of stuff is um, uh, a comfort to people uh, or a convenience to people. But I, I really see these things as convenience-based devices. And um, th there was an Onion article, and I, I love The Onion. I'm totally, totally in love with The Onion. But uh, they were, I'll post a link in the description, but they were basically saying, you know, we're, we're getting money, ad money, just by mentioning the new iPhone. And the tremendous amount of um, chatter and buzz and all of this discussions about smartphones, not, not intelligent discussions, but I mean, at the level of trying to market these things to people, trying to get people excited so that, you know, they'll, they'll mindlessly walk in uh, and buy the upgrade, like in the Futurama episode episode is is to me just sort of so much nonsense in light of um you know there's it's like they're they're 10 years behind real computers uh as i would call them and i think physics is always going to be a limit and i think that a lot of people are watching this the progress of these phones dreaming of the day when their when their phone really is going to be the all-in-one solution to everything but you know there's oh I, unless they come up with some radically new technology it's only just going to have the limitation of its size like the camera in the uh in the phone for example you know i'm sure the lens is plastic the or you know or or some you know some sort of plastic and that the sensor chip is teeny teeny tiny and you know there's a built-in flash which is also a nice convenience but really there is no way that it that a uh, a cell phone camera, just given uh, you know the chip technology, optical technology, would ever be able to compete with my digital SLR. It's just not. It, it's it's you know it's within the physics of the lenses and within you know uh, the physics of the chip size and stuff like that is always going to be the li limiting factor and um, these shrunk down versions no matter you know if they reach five megapixels 10, 10 megapixels whatever you know I think that probably the better ones are up to ten megapixels now they're always in some way going to be handicapped by their size um, but a lot of people I think naively are sold on the idea that these things are just going to keep getting better and better and better and better and you're going to be able to do anything with this you know um, you know wonder device tricorder in your pocket and it's funny because I think a lot of this cell phone technology is straight out of science fiction television and there was a there was a documentary I think, I think it was on the History Channel about how uh, how uh, Star Trek created the future or predicted the future or made the future or whatever whatever the title was and uh, you know of course tricorders these smartphones very much are like that but even within star trek you know there was still the, the ship's computer was still more powerful than their tricorders you know there was never a point at which you know uh, the full power of any given um computing device was was shrunk down to the point where size was irrelevant and as i implied in my first video i, I do think that we should take it very seriously what the cost is for trying to develop these convenience-based uh toy devices and um I don't know, I, I guess I want to avoid sounding like a Luddite, but, you know, the cell phone was an interesting innovation because you can have uh, a phone with you everywhere, and I, I guess it's nice to, if you're going to be dragging around a Walkman, that your, your Walkman and your phone are the same thing, but beyond, uh, you know, a limited class, I, I, I wouldn't want, use this to watch video when I could just go watch video 
on the television in the living room or on my computer screen or any number of larger devices. I have much, much more powerful uh, means of creating any of the things or creating or doing any of the things that uh, this this phone offers me as an option to do. And, and personally, I find a lot of things uh, to be a complete and total pain in the ass, like uh, typing, especially since this is a, a touchscreen type thing. Uh, and they have a feature now in which they try and predict which word you're going to use next. And uh, so you have on one, on one hand the, the touch screens are a pain in the ass to operate. And then it's, it's trying to predict which word you're going to use. And, and it's like, you know what, forget it. Why should I even bother? I'm going to wait to the day when this thing can just read my mind. And then I won't have to deal with touch screens uh, for, for typing on it. Um, they, they, they all come with their own nuisance, as, as a lot of people in the comment section uh, sort of touched upon. Depending on the phone, depending on the oper operating system within the, the tablet or the phone or whatever it is, it could be locked or unlocked. And essentially, with, you know, Apple and Windows, uh, I guess would be the main example of locked phones. And I see that as an attempt to uh, herd people, to trick people into buying things. I guess, I guess that's another sort of cynical point to bring up about all of these things. I was reading an article, um, a news article about Walmart competing with Amazon, and I guess it's very, uh, you know, un Neil Postman of me to, to want to bring up the news in the minute, but it was talking about uh, Walmart taking Amazon more seriously as a competitor and one thing that they use as an example was developing a smartphone app which would allow the user to um, uh, scan you know scan an item or uh, order an item that's out of stock if they if they go to a Walmart and they wanted whatever and it wasn't there you know they can order it from their smartphone because they realized as people, as these things like smartphones were becoming more and more common, as people had access to the internet everywhere, suddenly the internet became more and more of a place uh, for people who were price conscious. And, um, you know, they could go into a Walmart, look at something, see how much it costs online, and buy it and, and uh, you know, undercut Walmart. Um, and, and I guess for a lot of things, uh, Online is cheaper because it doesn't have the you know the overhead disadvantages that uh, that a retail store does when you're operating out of a warehouse, and um, so major businesses are now seeing smartphone technology and the way people are using it as as part of their business strategy, and so much of this is it's. It stopped becoming a, a place, uh, you know, just something like, hey, we, you can have your music and your, and your video on there as well. And uh, the business world is caught on and essentially is now looking at, it, at this as like, how do we get, how do we take control of this technology to make this the new way in which people shop and which people uh, think about their purchases and think about what they own and a lot of more things are being pushed towards uh, cloud and streaming and subscription-based fees. And, you know, I guess I could go on all day, essentially, uh, talking about each individual new development in the way the Internet technology is going. But um, I guess, again, the cynical thing to point out would be that you know, a lot for all, for all the hype of smartphones, underneath that is a level in which they're they're trying to come up with new ways to, uh, you know, to trick people into buying things. You know, the 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 advertisers are never ever far behind, and uh, as I as I mentioned with the the quote unquote free version of Alice in Wonderland, that came with an embedded advertisement. So I'm not sure what else to add to this video, so I guess at this point I'll just leave it to Professor Anton to comment on or extrapolate on any things that I talked about or the audience in general if they want to comment or expand upon anything that I said.